She's kicking in now. Oh, it's I think so. Um, Where do I sit? Should we not have three Is there uh, anybody out there? <laughs> oh, House of a Thousand Dates the two melons said yay. Already, honey. Everybody else is saying hello that uh, they're seeing us. All right. Well, we managed to get to live stream to actually be live. Are we all live right now? No. We oh, taped okay. this earlier. Oh, you know we are live, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Just making sure. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, you have a microphone, too, you can use. Hi, hola. I do. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Marijuana Man. You're now f under the influence, because that's where we're from. And um, <laughs> it's Wednesday, and this is uh, Kush Queen in between. In between In between what, an though? empty chair and me. Where's my buddy Al? I don't know. Well, turns out Al, last week, uh, as you all know, was grounded by his mom when she came to town couldn't come to the show so I guess they spent some time at home alone together and Al was singing around the house and she felt that he had pretty good singing voice oh. so he's been shipped off to Vienna boys choir two words is this need serious? I say more so is Al, this for real he's an alto turns out not an alchemist but an alto <laughs> yeah. I'm so shocked right now. So no uh, look for Al in Vienna with the boys' choir. Coming soon. <laughs> Coming soon to a church near you. Just kidding. That, that's <laughs> all I know. Of course, the Vienna boys' choir has been around for a while. When do you think that started? Should I guess? Yes. Okay. I'll roll a joint. 1969. Earlier. Oh my God, the 1800s? Earlier. The 1700s? Earlier. No. Way. When did it start? 1498. Wow. On the dot, yeah. Well, apparently in Vienna there was they had a lot of extra boys. A lot of boys in Vienna at the time. I'm not too sure what... Uh, oh, I just heard a snapple go off right there. That was plethora. the sound. <laughs> well, if you did hear that sound, that would be because Jeremiah just opened us. And Marius. <laughs> when did Marius come in? They're in a totally... Miss missing in action. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we need an ashtray. The thoughts expressed by Marius Android on the show do not necessarily reflect that of Marius the real person. Could you so, go get me one, please? Yeah, we need the uh, ashtrays in here. Something fierce. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. We're uh, flying solo here today. We're just... Uh, Broadcasting to Pot TV this afternoon. Tommy went uh, with Al. So, Tommy Boy, Boys Choir, you get it. I do it. This just in. Clean ashtray. An ashtray. So, um, yeah, we miss them both already, but they're going to yes. be gone for years. That's a very long program, the choir. sad. I didn't even get to say goodbye. Oh, yeah. Once you get into the choir... You, you never get out. You never get out. You're never the same. No. No. So Everything's a goddamn musical. It's a song. Your life will be just a song it's, to it's him. That's all it is. That. So, um, yeah, we got um, people in the chat. That's What's for sure. On? A nightmare on Dab Street. Your mic's off, it says. Who's? Who's? Minor marijuana man's. Let's see. I will look. Check. Test. <laughs> check. Check. Well, Alice Mike is off. <laughs> yeah, well, he's not here. 
Come on, Joys. Maybe we could turn Al's mic up a bit. But Kush Queen's very quiet. She doesn't have a lot to say. Oh, I have a lot to say. Oh, good. Well, well <laughs> yeah. Your guys' mic that was on. Um, yeah, we're just fooling around with old technology today. Kind of a retro show. Um, yeah, some of our equipment <laughs> went to Vienna too, so we'll catch up with those guys. I got a Euro Rail pass, and uh, we'll find them. We'll, f- we'll find them. That's yeah. Right. So yeah, they went off to some sort of expo in uh, Austria to Vienna. I'm Crazy. just still taken back by this. I can't believe he's in a choir. Don't I'd you, love to hear him sing. Didn't you see his Facebook? No. Huh. I didn't, which is weird because I like Facebook. It is weird because mm-hmm. you are Facebook. <laughs> Al is a beautiful singer. I've never Sings heard him like sing. an angel. No. So who else we got in the chat? Green Supremes there? Vegetarian zombies back. I didn't Brown think toes. I didn't think you'd survive. Backpacker 420. Clam toes. Nice to see your name. Don't, not a big fan of that name though. Clam toes. Don't really like saying it. Um, Vic B C Vape Stoner. I think we met here in the lounge the other day, and that was fun. I always like meeting. Uh, people from the chat in l- real life. You just keep the noise down. <laughs> what? Till your birthday. Birthday who? Yeah, let's be quiet till your birthday. <laughs> well, then tell us tomorrow. Just kidding. <laughs> pre-birthday Happy pre-birthday. Pre-birthday announcement. Woo! I get it. I get it. There's a... Uh, <laughs> it is? Oh, happy birthday, baby. A lot of uh, October Yeah, babies. wherever you are, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Let's check it. Now it is. Is it? Where did the chat go? Quick, grab it. There it is. <laughs> the chat just went away. I thought you guys just all were quiet. Ursa. Everyone is pre-birthday. Yeah, every day of your life, except on your birthday, you're pretty much pre-birthday. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Every yeah. day is... Uh, That's why no one cares until it's really the day. Birthday. Yeah, I was born at 4.20 in the afternoon. Pretty much. Pretty much? Or you were? I don't know the exact time, but around there. I think I was born in the morning, 7 seven something in the morning. Morning, baby. Morning Maybe that's baby. why I'm a morning person. I'd rather get up early, work, and get off around like 3 or 4. I think we all guessed that. Really? That you're a morning person. Yeah. Really? I did, anyway. Oh. Do I give off that vibe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you give off those pictures. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh, my goodness. Wow, I was totally just put on blast what? there by Mr. Jeremiah. No, I don't care. Blast. No, I'll leave it so close. My private photos. I love those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what's going on in the world? Well, North Burnaby is nice. I'm enjoying being out there. It's quiet. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very quiet. quiet compared to living like on Granville and Davie. Yeah. Okay. Very oh, yeah. big difference. It's but it's nice. I can't imagine. The air I is different out there, I swear. I live right in the thick of it downtown <laughs> here. Holy moly. Yeah. The n- amount of noise throughout <coughs> the night is equal to that of the daytime for sure. It's constant. There's a pub across the street. 
that that is constant from about seven o'clock. There'll be a busker out there destroying every fucking song he can think of. Oh man! By himself, no one's singing because no one's drunk yet. They won't be out singing with him till about wow well, two thirty in the morning. <laughs> then they'll destroy those songs again. I'm faced with having to play those songs on my own stereo. 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning just so it's not <laughs> ruined for me forever. Yeah. yeah. Splare right. your own and system. Keep on rocking in the free world. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> just blaring that, eh? And people really think they can sing well when they're drunk. Oh, yeah. For those people who are drunk and singing, you don't sound good. Just remember that. You, you just really think you do. don't sound good, yeah. And there's a reason why you don't sing when you're not drunk, because you know then <laughs> that you don't sound good. <laughs> yeah, so if you only sing when you're drunk, you probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, you probably you suck. shouldn't. Unless you're alone or in a field or something. Like not outside. Out in a barn, far, <laughs> far, far away. Not outside my window. <laughs> so um, here's a thing that uh, was hot off the presses today. Ooh. Marijuana may protect your brain from traumatic injury. Yeah. People who use marijuana may be more likely to survive a serious head injury. Hmm. So, all day long, we've been smacking each other with fucking heavy shit to Ill, no ill effect whatsoever. True. Very true. Today, of course, is uh, the addiction special. Yeah, first one's free. First show's free. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, pretty sure you won't be able to get enough of this one. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Marijuana may protect your head from serious injury. Oh. Helmet laws. I always knew those were fucked. <laughs> like, why? Why do you have to wear a helmet now? If no, you have to have to wear an ounce around your head. <laughs> yeah, that wear will a, you from a big <laughs> bud you on your head. <laughs> <coughs> the uh, What's wrong with our, our whole world just spun around there. Mm. <laughs> so um, yeah, how's everybody doing in the chat? We'll try to look in on you. Whoa, did you see that? We just shifted. No. Yeah. We're on Craziness. the <laughs> we're on the level now. Are you? Yeah. Is that better? Much. <laughs> A nightmare on Dab Street is baked. Vic is good. Vegetarian zombie just has an exclamation. Is it four twenty? No, no, it's not. No, not yet? <laughs> Don't lie to me. It's funny, this computer says it is, though. It? <laughs> Mine says it's 420. 420 here. Yeah, I got 420. Happy 420. Really? Slow again. Yeah, 420. Slow again. <laughs> now. <laughs> Actually, this so story. Go into the story more, this yes. This story about. Uh, being able to survive a serious head injury points out how, like, they just contradict themselves in this <laughs> when they talk about marijuana, right? They, uh, they, I can't remember it all now. So forget about that. <laughs> Brain no, I hit protected. my head earlier. And now, no, they, uh, did this study. The previous studies have also suggested that alcohol may protect the brain <laughs> from brain injuries too, though. Oh my God. <laughs> That's fucking bullshit. But with a caveat, they say those studies did not account for the presence of THC, however. So the indicators that perhaps they thought that alcohol was protecting the brain might have uh, not been that at all, but the very cushiony effects of THC. <laughs> Foamy, if you will. Now, well, 
I, I can imagine if you're hit on the head with a bottle of whiskey or hit on the head with a bag of THC or marijuana, you wouldn't, uh, you'd be more protected with the... Nothing would happen to you. If I whipped a bag of THC in, you it took might, it right head on. It would make a bit of a thud, but it wouldn't be... It'd make a noise, for no sure. Brain injury, so. <laughs> now... That's how I behead people. That's how Kush Queen beheads people. A bag of THC. <laughs> Off with their heads! <laughs> Dangerous stuff. <laughs> Very oh, dangerous. Sharp as a blade. <laughs> but here's what uh, Dr. David Plurad, who, what is he? One of the guys who uh, writes for the American Surgeon magazine. Oh, I love that magazine. I used to have a subscription to that when I was <laughs> yeah. a kid. Yeah, too bad the Canadian, like the Canadian Surgeon, Surgeon magazine. <laughs> it was kind of boring. Um, he said there's not going to be one answer. Is marijuana good for you? Is marijuana bad for you? He says it's like most things in life, and particularly medicine, it's going to be somewhere in between, which is kind of a frightening thing for him to say that eh, all medicine is maybe can be bad for you. Yeah, that is kind of somewhere in, it's well, not going to be good or I think bad you just meant for to you. Say you can take too much medicine, but it kind of doesn't apply yeah. to marijuana. As always, when they find something positive about marijuana, they try to distance themselves from it at the end of the article. Yeah. Oh, no, no, we're not saying that uh, you should go out and get head injuries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Which is clearly what they're saying. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. Uh, many kids have just gotten head injuries today. So many from baseball, it's unbelievable, actually. Baseball. Oh, yeah. Five kids a year die because of baseball in the United States no alone. Shit. Yeah, really. Wow. Like crack with a ball. Yep. Well, dude, those things are like That's hard true. as hell. They, they shouldn't play baseball within like 500 meters of a school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They shouldn't have any of those baseball factories. You know the reason why most people die at baseball parks? Nachos. Hot dogs? <laughs> huh? No. Lightning. What? Yep. How many? Th <laughs> what? Hey, fucking Google it. <laughs> wow. That's how long those games are. Taken uh, back by this yeah. round, flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> she wow. was blown away um, by uh, mind well, equals blown. The fact that Al thing. has joined a choir. I, <laughs> I still haven't gotten over that yet. Can you turn? That? Dinner around till it all lights up. Nice. What is it? Sublimator. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're uh, gonna do some dabs. Are we gonna do some dabs? Yeah. I have my butter over it's there. It's a nightmare on Dab Street. Now, the reason today is the addiction show is because here in Canada, the Center of Addiction and Mental Health made a big announcement. It was actually last week. But uh, I was out doing heroin all weekend, so I didn't have time to do the story. You too? Right. Oh, I got schizophrenia, you know. Yeah. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I should make fun of either one of those <laughs> scenarios, and I don't. But they came out and had a big announcement about uh, marijuana and what we should do about it. And... Most of it, and actually all of it, is ludicrous. And I question them thinking that they should have any role in it whatsoever. Can they, the Center of Addiction and Mental Health exists solely on the idea that things are addictive. Now, this whole fucking thing, Center started in 1949, for God's sakes. They haven't figured out anything. It started because of people's alcoholism. Alcoholism has increased exponentially since they started. The availability of alcohol is widespread compared to when they started. They have not curbed it at all. They've done nothing to bring any relief to society from the addiction to alcohol. And now they're yapping about what we should do about... Uh, Cannabis, and yeah, here's what a government monopoly. Here's what they say. Yeah, the first thing they say is that the government should have a monopoly on it. 
much the same as alcohol. Now, I went on to their page and I looked up their ideals about uh, why they think that the Monopoly model is the best model. And, be, and, and the only reason that I, I found that out was because they had a... The only thing that they actually said about alcohol was that they liked that the liquor board is in charge of all the alcohol. That's all they really said. What? Oh, yeah. Like, it's sad. And the reason they said this, or the, the reason the, they said the reason is, was that the liquor board does a good job of curbing use and, uh, like... Oh, yeah, sure they do. <laughs> like, how, how do they do a good job yeah. of that? <coughs> well, I don't know. Liquor. They do the complete opposite. Because they're a monopoly. Right, they they say that it's easy to do it because they're a monopoly. If it's well, if everybody else is just selling booze willy nilly, they can't control the uh, messaging and all this money. other yes. stuff. Right, and you go, holy fuck! The devastation from alcohol in our society, including Ontario, they they were just talking about Ontario there, but is is massive it's absolutely massive and they don't address it at all now here they are saying that this very same government should have the monopoly on cannabis they shouldn't have a monopoly on anything the you know, government it just means that poor people can't get booze <laughs> yeah That's well well they're able yeah. to get it <laughs> yeah but actually in a way hmm, i'm they, starting to wonder I mean, no it's it's just <laughs> bullshit the bad, government gets bad. all the taxes, wastes those taxes on other things, and it, when it turns out that we don't get enough taxes to cover the devastation that alcohol causes, it's something like $16 billion. There's Rose. Hi, Gonna Rose. come join us here? Okay. Come and join us here. Um... Yeah, they suggested the devastation of alcohol is about $16 billion a year, and we get about $6 billion in taxes from the sale of alcohol. Hmm. <laughs> There's quite, quite a bit left over yeah. that the taxpayer is picking up the tab, and nobody addresses that. Right. Now they say that fucking marijuana's got to pay for everything that's ever going to be done from the moment they <laughs> legalize it. We need to tax it so heavily. Canadian or the Center of Addiction and Mental Health recommends legalization of cannabis with strict regula regulation. Like alcohol, right? The strict uh. regulations on alcohol, you can advertise it. Oh no. They say cannabis prohibit marketing, advertising, and sponsorship. So you can't have the cannabis fucking Blue Jays. You can only have the Labatt's Blue Jays, right? You can have all the Budweiser cars in all the races and every sports team being sponsored by alcohol. But you couldn't do it with cannabis. Right? But not with cannabis, No. no. Because cannabis is addictive. Well, think of the children. I was just going to say that. Oh my God, you said it. I was thinking it. Legalize cannabis, forget the children. <laughs> How about that be a How new about slogan? That new eh? statement, yeah. yeah, forget the kids. They don't even care. Um, every study that's out there right now about what's going on in Colorado is suggesting that uh, the teenage usage of cannabis has dropped since January. In fact, everything has dropped in Colorado. All of their violent crimes, all of their, you know, road fatalities. Uh, the list goes on and on of the things that have improved. Now, short term, of course, but... Short term, of course. I think all the people who would have been causing all the destruction out there are just busy counting money. Now. Yeah. Okay, there's yeah. many new Everybody jobs too much money to count. Many new jobs. Everybody employed in the state and just counting money. What are you puffing on over there? Rose has got some sort of uh, hooter. Oh. That lights up. <laughs> we got some over here on the table. Now, what else? They Here's another... 
thing that they want to do is the limit availability. Place caps on retail density and limits on hours of sales. That's what the, they suggest. <laughs> Just like booze, right? The pub closes at 2.30 in the morning over there. I see people at the other pub at 9.30 in the morning getting a drink. <laughs> what time in the morning? Can 9.30. 9.30. Oh, yeah. No, mind. Well, you got to have a little, like, you know, a couple you. shots of whiskey in your coffee. Well, uh, whatever, right? But, you know. <coughs> then they want to curb demand through pricing. Pricing policies should curb demand while minimizing the continuation of black markets, they say willy-nilly. Willy-nilly. Right? Willy <laughs> nilly. Like they just say that. They don't have a fucking clue how that works or how they would possibly do it. Here's how, you re here's how they think or suggest that people will drink less alcohol if you charge them way high amounts of money. Right? <coughs> That's a, a reasoning, right? So, how are you going to curb like demand of cannabis through pricing? You can't curb the demand of cannabis through pricing with high prices because the black market will undercut you and continue to thrive. Yep. True that. Right. So they don't, they don't know uh, any, obviously anything about addiction. If they knew about addiction, they would know that cannabis is not that wildly addictive. But their whole fucking lives depend on it. Trust me, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Center for Addiction for Money and uh, Hot Jobs is what C A M H A stands for. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they want to invest in education and prevention. They want to enhance access to treatment and expand treatment options. Expand treatment options. Oh, my God. This is for cannabis they're talking about. These are supposed to be professional fucking doctors and surgeons and neurophysicists and they're supposed to be really <coughs> smart people and they don't know anything about cannabis. Everything that they're suggesting here in their strict regulation is based on what they heard about cannabis. <laughs> Not any proof. Yeah. They haven't even fucking looked at it. How could they not have seen the study that I saw with that little graph that puts the addictiveness of cannabis down below coffee? How could they not have ever seen that? Hmm. <laughs> right? They don't even talk about coffee in their, on their page. They don't, it's not on their radar the addiction and mental health people. So if really? coffee isn't on their radar, why is cannabis? Given that the most studies suggest that it's less addictive than cannabis. Or Maybe coffee's caffeine. Next. Yeah, I'm very addicted to caffeine, I have to admit. Like Regulations really? On coffee. Oh, oh they talk addicted. about cannabis, alcohol, and gambling. Gambling. Oh my God. These are fucking doctors and stuff. You know, they're figuring it all out. Gambling. Old as prostitution, for God's sakes. Everybody's gambling everywhere. We have casinos <laughs> like, all over the place. Really? Yeah. Run by the government. Yeah. Again. Government monopoly. All right? They're all about that. The reason that they need a government monopoly is because the expenses of the CAMH per year are $250 million dollars. Two hundred and fifty million dollars these shit. people fucking are grinding through here, right? No, actually it's more than that. It is three hundred and sixty million. Two hundred and fifty million dollars is just their wages. Wow. <laughs> 99% of all the money these people go through are their salaries and wages for their addiction to addiction research. All right, that's why they've come out with this brouhaha in the news about what should be done when we legalize marijuana. 
they're what they're saying. It's a whole study that says, hey, keep us around, would you? Can yeah. you manage to somehow keep shoveling $250 million Jesus a year to us? Please? It's cool they're supporting legalization. Yeah, there's the rub. But it's fuck bad yeah. causes. No, I say fuck you. I don't care if you support it or not. You don't support the legalization of marijuana. You support the over-regulation of it. Mm-hmm. That's what you support. Yep. So fuck off. Next. Yep. Right, you're yeah, not. You you. They haven't shown me that they're even uh, knowledgeable about this substance. Like I, I'm not sure that I'm wrong about what I feel about marijuana, and what I've seen. But they seem to be wrong. You go, how is this possible? They're supposed to be pro- professional scientists and fucking <laughs> medical Morons. leaders. It's fucked. Yeah. The, the list of people and the executive and vice president and oh, the list goes on of their little titles dragging out $250 million in wages and having absolutely no success. Yeah. That was in 2013. Actually, their budget increased, oh, $33 million in one year. 2012 to 2013, they increased their... F- and spent it all, you know? Actually, at the end of 2012, they had $7 million left over, but they still got another $33 million extra. Cha-ching. Yeah, my eyes it's have all dollar ching. signs in them. And nobody mentioned that in the article. All the references that these people made to how bad marijuana is came directly from that study that preceded it the days before about this amalgamation of all the studies saying that chronic marijuana use certainly shows all the ill effects and they did not show that. That study was bullshit. But they all use it. The the press covered it in a way that the study didn't even really say. Oh yeah. Like they all just wrote it exactly the way it was presented. No. So these people are fucking, right? Oh, it's got to be labeled and it's got to be tested and uh, total total insanity, every single one of them. You have to curtail higher risk products and formulations. This would include higher potency formulations and products designed to appeal to youth. Oh my God! How do they throw that youth in there? <laughs> the children, remember? It's always about. Oh the my God! That's so. Th- it's just such a cheap shot. Yeah. Higher. Wh- and what's wrong with higher concentrations? Like. Higher well, they concentrations don't. Concentrations of cannabis are not harmful. <coughs> they don't even understand it. No. The substance at all. So. Obviously not. They just. Uh, off the cuff say this shit because it serves them they say this shit and it's because yep. it's been said before because it was said before by people who it served them to get the money for this yeah. right this is why it continues if they came out today with this kind of nonsense that no one had ever said anything about before everybody go ah, I think you're nuts yeah. But because it's been going on for 60 years, they go, ooh, there's some truth to it. Yeah, exactly. Well, these people didn't do any studies whatsoever or fucking refer to any real studies that exist. It's only that stupid amalgamation of other dumb studies that never proved anything. Yes. All right? That only always suggested something. And when you looked at each one of those studies, those were the very people who were getting the money to do the fucking studies. Yeah. And yeah. if they didn't have cannabis to study they ain't got nothing they got nothing left so many departments in our world have become addicted to the money they get for doing what they do so or they have a particular outcome already in mind when it comes to cannabis yeah they work for a drug research facility or center one of these anti-drug places yeah. or something government studies yeah and so the studies themselves are always bullshit anyways they are. So until they actually look at the plant, or and this is why people are those 
who are in control of that are so very reluctant to let them look at the plant, they're going to find out all the shit that we know because <coughs> we've had the opportunity to look at the plant. So they should actually be coming to us. <laughs> but no, they wouldn't have all their nine fucking 10, 11 regulations that they want to slam on this from some dopey fucking <coughs> little department in Toronto. Fuck off, University of Toronto. That's where they get all their money from, right? It's all bullshit. It's just a cash flow. So you'll see, and I see, everybody who's opposed to the legalization of marijuana has a cash flow coming out to them to keep it that way. Yeah. All right. So don't get me started on this shit. Meanwhile, in Colorado, they're fucking knee-deep in cash flow. They're making so much money, they don't know what to do with it. It has jumped about a million dollars a fucking month since they started in January and has not uh, stopped at all. Recreational sales totaled 34 million in August, up from 29 million the previous month. And medical marijuana also jumped sharply in August. After several months of flat or declining sales, medical sales figures were just under the same as the recreational total. So they sold the same amount of weed. Thirty-three million dollars worth of medical marijuana. So now they uh, they have no idea how much marijuana <laughs> that people will actually buy from them. <coughs> the taxes that it's they're like an ongoing thing dragging into it. Now, here's the best part about uh, them selling so much pot in Colorado was that neighboring Nebraska, they're now starting to whine because of the amount of marijuana that's coming across their border from Colorado. Oh, my God. Now, <laughs> you all know Sydney, Nebraska, a small city, less than 7,000 people. Oh, yeah, I'd go there every summer. Located 10 miles from the Colorado border, they're... Five of every ten traffic stops results in a marijuana arrest. Oh. Now, they've already run through their overtime budget within six months. Um, they got no more money left to, uh, right? The courts, the cops, all the this stuff no. is not yeah. helping them out, right? So he said it's deteriorating a quality of life here if we don't do something because they're, it's costing them so much money, right? So interesting. The sheriff, county sheriff says the county is getting so many felony drug cases stemming from Colorado marijuana it's draining resources to house those arrested in the jail and to pay defense attorneys. Cheyenne County made 60 marijuana arrests last year, up from 45. So it has affected on the budget side just because on the jail side, <laughs> we've had an increase of people. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Said Sheriff John Jensen. So that's good. That's really good because they're going to run out of money to prosecute and they're going to go, wow, not only are we running out of money, we could be getting the taxes like Colorado is. And so it won't be long before Nebraska will be legalizing pot and every other state that touches Colorado. Now, apparently uh, Hillary Clinton was in Colorado this week. She was in there com campaigning for uh, some senator. Her and the senator were in a co local coffee shop, and she admired the designs that topped uh, their cups of coffee. And uh, she said to her friend, she said, look at you, you got like a plant. <laughs> and then she said, is that a marijuana plant? And that's exactly what it was. 
the uh, barista had made a pot leaf on the top of uh, her friend's coffee and uh, on, but on top of her coffee they made a pig <laughs> oh my god <laughs> which Subtle she hint. which she called really neat <laughs> Like, really? A pig <laughs> for Hillary Clinton? That's fucking funny. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. That's a very unusual choice. But uh, <laughs> Now, Clinton said she has never tried pot, and there's no chance she'll try the drug out herself. She said, absolutely not. I didn't do it when I was young, and I'm not going to start now. She's a liar. Yeah. She smokes up everybody every else day, all day. Her. Yeah. Everybody already said she's a pot smoker when she was a kid. Yeah. All her friends and all said it to the media. And stuff. She'll be back to it as soon as she gets a little whiff of any illness that marijuana might have anything to do with helping. Exactly. Her and Bill will be uh, out there campaigning for it, I would think. <laughs> well, she'll no. be president, so it'll be easier <laughs> yeah. for her. Yeah, exactly. Now, here's the thing. I don't know how many of you know of (coughs) the famous Parisian brand of handbags called Hermes. Hermes? Hermes Birkin bags. Mm -hmm. They uh, have been returned uh, to the manufacturer because they smell like marijuana. (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah. So anybody in the house got their Birkin bag here? Well, yeah. Mm, Oh no, they're like twenty thousand dollars for one. Yeah, dude. Really? Oh, I already smoked mine. And they smell. (laughs) Yeah, and they smell like marijuana. Each one comes with a pound of marijuana in it. Even better. It make it worth your fucking money at least. (laughs) No kidding. When left in heat or in enclosed space, the bags smelled like marijuana or a skunk. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god. Or a skunk. <laughs> yeah. One of the two. Now. Stone skunk. <laughs> yeah. What a bizarre thing, <laughs> though, eh? 20 I grand for one was. of these purses. Uh, a friend of mine had a very expensive purse. It was only like $5,000. And so I said to her, So how much money do you have in the purse now? And she said, Oh, well, like $40. And I said, do you think you'll ever have $5,000 in the purse? And he said, oh, no, my, I wouldn't. I'd never want to. I'd be afraid to have that much money in my purse. And I said, well, the purse is worth $5,000, right? <laughs> That's an interesting thing. Didn't understand. But make uh, the whole package worth 10 <laughs> Yeah. Right? So it uh, turns out the creation of the Birkin bag is uh, quite a fun little story. But I know all you people know that already. Well, I think, I think they fired all the sucks in their factory because yeah. they were smoking dope on the job. Yeah. Well, any of you people who have been smoking the weed on the job at the uh, factory, come see us. <laughs> we smell like marijuana, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> My bag also smells Bring like Bring a couple birthday bags with you, will ya? Yeah. <laughs> so, here's what's going to happen in Italy now. They've decided to bring the price down. The marijuana is going to be grown by the Italian army. Okay. Well, that seems Italy wants, to, wants its army to grow cheap marijuana in a bid to discourage medicinal users from funding illegal street dealers. Oh. By growing shitty marijuana? Why would the military grow it? So because they have a high security military compound lab earmarked oh. for growing cannabis for the national health care system, <laughs> despite <laughs> criticism from leading political and religious figures. Mm. Uh, wow, so even religious figures. Like yeah. Since uh, the med- medical use of marijuana was legalized last year, the government has been on the hunt to keep costs down as few people could afford to sign up for the pharmacy scheme. <coughs> so they're going to have the army grow it. Well, wow. Yeah, that's a strange one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they tried the Navy and the Air Force, but you know, they couldn't. Yeah. The seeds just s- sank or just flew through the air. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. So... They got the. They decided on the army finally. Yeah. Ground troops. They went. Yeah. 
Ground <laughs> troops. <laughs> right over my yeah. head. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a pretty good use to put an army, that's too. True. Not, sh- not sure people. the Italian <laughs> army has the greatest <laughs> reputation of actually following through on things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They just like surrendered, in surrendered in the Second World War. But uh, so we'll keep an eye on that for any good. Uh, what is going on? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god! It's like a game. It's like a game they've devised out there. It's like musical chairs, but they're like moving the chairs. So uh, what's going on here now? Uh, well, is this heated up now? We should take a dab. The uh, lonely sublimator. I know. Let's take a dab. Uh Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. Looks like we might be dead here. Oh, but maybe we're back. (laughs) 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 I don't know how to work this thing. Don't you? No, I actually don't. (coughs) I'm just dabbing in there. Not into the holes, just right on the edge right there, right? Not so gooey, eh? Um, yeah, Halloween's coming up, so the Denver police are warning trick-or-treaters about marijuana-infused candy. That's funny. <laughs> they always have to have something, right? Like, the police sit around all fucking year trying to figure out something to warn everybody about at Halloween. When very few incidents actually occur... No, none of the incidents that actually what they warned you about. There's actually turns out there's never been razor blades in apples. All of the poisonings of children at Halloween have been done by their fucking family, and all of the other bad things that have happened to them. No strangers have done this. Like how stupid would anybody be to pass out? Like really? So. They've always got some danger that uh, probably be good for the kids, <laughs> right? Really? They should hand out infused candy. Yeah. Halloween would be a lot more interesting. Oh, yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. And uh, kids would have a good appetite to eat all the other crap. They don't warn you that... They don't warn the kids the that they're... The amount of, sh- like, <laughs> shit... That everybody eats around Halloween is just They don't crazy. warn the kids yeah. that they're going to get Tootsie Rolls. Bad refined sugar is for you. How many people die every year of eating too much fucking candy? Mm. No warning there from the Denver police. Nope. Less than get struck hey. by lightning at a baseball game. Yeah. So one, a guy at a, the dispensary in Denver who was their go-to guy to tell you what to do his recommendations is to throw away any candy that isn't sealed in a recognizable brand name wrapper. Uh, there you go. So, okay. yeah. so and Hershey's is okay. And Billy's. Hey, all these, uh, the fucking nightmare Rumble crap that there. they put in that <laughs> stuff. Come on. So this is and totally he, different from the Halloween policy of years past, though. <laughs> yeah. Years. Right. Yeah, so no, this year's like... Year. Needle holes, you know, in which you know. Yeah, so your kids who are going out there thinking you're gonna get all this infused shit, you're not gonna. That's fucking funny. Oh my god. I'm nicely baked. Wow. Toasty. Yeah, I brought the sublimator on the show today. Uh, They're all off in Europe. slinging their wares. I don't know where they are now. They were somewhere between Amsterdam and Austria. So Mark and Jody went there as well and are going to be attending the expo. Some, There's some award Mark's getting there, I believe. Yeah, I think they're both getting it, actually. Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, cool. It's an activist award. And there's a cash prize, even. Wow. So... Yeah. Yeah, so that's exciting for them, and we're glad that uh, they could get over. And uh, we're going to be selling seeds again back here at uh, the shop. Woo-hoo. So that's awesome. I'll be back at the desk, that's and uh, that's going to happen on November 10th. 
actually. <laughs> so we'll we'll see you then, um, awesome. and more about it That's as cool. uh, we get closer to that date. So we're going to be hooking up the Vancouver Seed Bank and. Um, Search in the world for the best genetics as we always did, and we'll get them here and sell them to you. Yep. And then you can grow them, bring them back, and we'll smoke the weed. That's <laughs> how it should go. So. Like that, I like that circle. Yeah. So, yeah, look forward to that in the uh, time ahead. And coming up this week, we'll have Maria Stoner show the Stoner Report Friday, 2 o'clock. Live. Live. Eh? No more of this fucking animatron bullshit that we've been seeing, eh? Sending his robot. I am quite alive. He is quite alert. Oh, I guess I have control of the cameras today. It's been all on us the whole there time. They are. I wondered why. I kept wondering, uh, though, the entire show, why doesn't it ever cut to their camera? <laughs> Yeah, we were just there once. once at the beginning. But um, yeah, we got Marius to show. You got uh, plans for the show, or you're just gonna wing it like you always do? I'm just gonna wing it. Wing it, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna be wearing a chicken exit. costume. I, I, I gonna come out. Yeah. I'm gonna invent the news. Like well, no, nothing I read there is actually real. So. And Jeremiah, you have uh, Jeremiah. You get. You've got a show. You do, just yeah. started. I'll be doing the show, and I'll, I think uh, Chris Bennett will be my guest. Actually, Chris Bennett. Chris Bennett. Wow. To talk about a bunch of different things that are happening and his latest projects that he's been working on. He's got a couple videos up on Pod TV right now that you guys can go and check out. Really awesome ones. But nice. yeah, and also probably Matt Murna will be joining me this week huh. to talk about. So both uh, ends of the spectrum. Both ends of the spectrum. Nice. Um, we'll be talking <laughs> though with Matt about Matt actually had the last interview with Constable Francis, the the uh, RCMP officer who passed away. Huh. Matt, he, his last interview was with Matt Murnau, huh. and so Matt, the, uh, Matt was writing articles about what was happening, and he got bullied to death. Really, <laughs> like uh, he committed suicide, but really he was bullied. because of Murnau. What's that? Because of Myrna. Not because of Myrna. Oh, no, no, I thought he was, he was that the, was the reason he was, the one who he was interviewed. Marijuana <laughs> in his uniform. Yeah, no, it didn't. His bullying didn't have to do with Myrna, and it wasn't by Myrna either. It was uh, who okay, was good. it then? Well, who was what? The bullies. <laughs> so the bullies were the government and the police officers. The who, RCMP. Yeah, yeah. Who, he had PTSD, and so he was smoking marijuana as a medicine. And they, he, somebody took a photo of him smoking it in his uniform. And so the police made a big deal about it, and he was like, I should be able to smoke in my uniform. Yeah, yeah. And they just wanted him to shut up about the whole thing. We all smoke in our uniforms. Yeah. Exactly. Every day. <laughs> um, yeah, so look for uh, Jer's show on Friday, and Marius is as well. Red Beard on Saturday afternoons. He's blowing glass, making cool shit, and having fun. Check that out. So there might cool. be some... Uh, Live stuff coming out of Austria from uh, Enrico and Tommy and Al. So the best way that's to that's where he is. The best way to catch <laughs> best way to catch some of that is to stay awake until they get back and watch. I actually believed you guys. I actually thought he fucking went to a choir. Like, I swear to God. You thought, so Al, you thought Al joined the Vienna I did, Boys Choir? I did, and I actually thought he had a beautiful voice, and, like, I was going to text him and be like, oh, I want to hear you oh, sing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I totally <laughs> believed you guys. Well, his mom has high yeah. hopes, so good yeah. luck, Al, with the choir. Uh, and plus with his the ballet choir. performance is going to take up all yeah, his yeah, time. Yeah, 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 enough, <laughs> enough, guys. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right, all right. True. Peace and out. And a great Just tap dancer, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if you're in Vienna, the the boys' choir will be performing uh, on Friday night, and uh, that performance starts at uh, <coughs> 7:30, I think. 60 do- 60 euros a ticket for the A section, all the way down to 30 for the D section. So that's right. Yeah. Yes. Hope to it's see you be there. Glorious performance. <laughs> All right, well, that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> Obviously, that's it for me. Um, thanks to Kush Queen for joining us. Nice as to be here, always. as always. 
and uh, Jer and uh, Marius as well. Thanks for having us, Marijuana Man. And all of you Thanks. folks in the Great. chat, Thanks for coming and playing along. <gasps> what happened? They're gone. Oh my God! They disappeared. They all left there us. they are. Two Vox there. Ours there. Jam band fan number three. Cool. <laughs> Backpacker. <laughs> nice. Ginga's there. Thanks for being in the house. Sabbath fan. Honey flower. Thanks a lot to Green Supreme for uh, fucking looking after shit out there and. <laughs> in chat world. Yeah, no doubt, he, eh? Uh, he straightens them out for us. Yeah. And he's not full of shit. I don't care what anyone might think. <laughs> Good on you, brother. Or sister. Who knows? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't want to. Resin Girl it was in the house, too. So, yeah, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, doing something. Something will have happened. Talking um, about go something. to the Center of Addiction and Mental Health and tell them you think they're crazy. <laughs> I just leave a bad a, feedback <laughs> on There's Yelp. a side story about the mental health now that they've uh, said that it's, you, it's okay to recommend marijuana. They're not allowed to have, any of the patients are not allowed to have cigarettes when they go into their thing. If they, if they, they're not allowed to bring the cigarettes into the place. So if they want to have a smoke in between their sessions or whatever, they have to go out, buy a new pack of cigarettes, and then throw it out. I, I read an article recently. So, huh. yeah, it, oh, no. it was like, so their, their uh, policy on tobacco is really weird, and now they're saying, yeah, it's okay to do marijuana. So it's madness. I just thought I'd bring that up. It was a story that I was recent. It's a strange thing. Yeah. <laughs> they're drunk on money down Bye. here at the yeah. CMHA. Wow, well, Kush Queen's got to run, so we got to yeah, get gotta out gotta go. Ciao. Peace and love. Right on. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Peace and pot. See you next week. <laughs>